can tdh see the jdm light for a very long time all of y'all have been commenting please feature a city build feature a vtech build we read the comments i read the comments so i decided to make justice to all of those comments this is india's fastest vtech in a street spec form and i'm here to tell you all about it Since you guys have anticipated a VTEC build for so long, I decided to start from the engine for the first time. And my oh my, has this gone completely off the charts? This is a completely built engine. Forged rods, uh, forged pistons. Uh, the cam has been upgraded to a stage three turbo cam. Uh, the header, as you can see, is fantastically made. It's very intricate, and the list is so long. that for the first time even i've got my phone out so let me tell you block brace apr head studs a uh, lightweight fly wheel stage 3 plus clutch close ratio gearbox with custom ratios for each gear quave type lsd a garrett 2871 gtx turbo which is the same turbo you would get in a stock r34 or an r35 um turbo smart external waste gate a tl blow off valve an intake manifold from edelbrock with ported runners and secondary injectors an edelbrock 64 mm throttle body a 750 cc set of injectors and an aem map sensor this is the beginning i can still continue mishimoto turbo hoses for all of the turbo plumbing high quality stainless steel clips an aluminum radiator battery relocated to the rear an aem fuel pressure regulator high flow denso fuel pump upgraded wiring a uh, 2 1/2 inch exhaust with the full shabang uh, upgraded air intake autometer gps digital speedometer and odometer a uh, wide band afr gauge the list just goes on and on so pretty much this is as good as a race car for the streets and nothing i'm saying nothing apart from the chassis shell and maybe a little bit of the interior is what is retained from the old car so i can continue talking about the car definitely because i'm not scared of driving this car at all but i really think you guys should see the inside because there is quite a lot that's been done on the inside too yeah just like any race car this has a racing seat racing bucket seats that are sparco sprint bucket seats that hold you in place no form of adjustment except moving forward and backward which is all that you need in a race car a uh, omp steering wheel boost gauges all over uh, the aem air fuel ratio gauge which always looks cool and a manual handbrake best thing clutch is heavy because it's a stage 3 plus clutch and the throws are exactly the same further on because you are pushing out quite a lot of power you've got a roll cage for if anything goes wrong and let's just be completely honest this is a race car so you're not going to be having quite a lot of uh visibility uh as you would expect from a car that is designed for the road but when it comes to seating position oh my god this is perfect the race car theme continues in the looks as you can see the car is completely liveried up and it's got really nice touches of uh, 0 to 100 in 4.8 seconds turbo beyond your imagination brain and balls resetter that's such a nice touch and i mean justified it's 450 bhp in an 850 ish kg body do the math that's some crazy power to weight ratio and as you can see it definitely looks as fast as those numbers sound 
in terms of aesthetics i really like the livery it is uh, very tasteful there are quite a lot of cool touches as i said with the stickering but the stance is also very pretty now you've got fully adjustable coil overs with uh, compression rebound preload everything adjustable 15 inch rims on some rather nice yokohama tires you've also got upgraded rotors pads and calipers of course since you're going to need all of that stopping power and overall the stance is really nice an extra jdm touch that is the yellow headlights look very nice in my opinion and overall it definitely does look pretty fast but how fast does it actually go life is all about growth and while everybody's rate of growth is different us car guys have a very specific way of marking milestones in our lives and that is buying a car for ourselves now why not buy yourself the car that you really want from the people that understand you as a car guy imagine you're welcoming a new member of the family into your house you need something practical smooth and reliable look no further than this 52k run second owner q3 possibly this could be one of the best deals in the q3 market right now or you've just passed your entrance test with flying colors and dad has told you time to get your car for college how about this a 1 liter tsi polo that is ready for you to put all the mods you want during college this is only run 32000 kilometers making it a very nice deal for a new driver now imagine you've finally gotten that promotion after years of work and it's time to get a brand new jazzy car for yourself how about this a vrs 230 with just 38000 kilometers and in pristine condition so if you're like me and you define the chapters of your life through the cars that you've owned look no further than tdh classifieds head on to thedriversup.com/tdhclassifieds and get yourself the car of your dreams Now a car like this requires quite a lot of concentration to drive. So if I sound stupid, I blame the car. Now, as you know, nothing inside the car shares uh anything with what the stock car is. And the way it drives, it's definitely that. For sure, it is a car that has been designed for performance and performance only. So refinement goes completely out the window. the clutch is easy to the clutch is easy to bog down there's a lot of cabin noise and it's very difficult to disengage that clutch the right way so every single bit of input has a lot of feedback and not only that even inching onto the throttle it's twitchy the steering feedback in fact is fantastic i think not much has been changed apart from the lsd but that is something i'm not going to be testing because i definitely do not have the balls to push this car to its limit talking about the turbo it spools late as you'd expect from such a massive turbo in such a tiny car but when you reach that threshold it becomes an absolute rocket it is a different car the turbo spool on this car is absolutely ridiculous as you as you'd expect from a tiny engine having a massive turbo so it is spooling late for sure but when you reach the point of spool oh my god it's just another planet of power let me just try and get it 
down the car is so ready all the time this is definitely it's the same philosophy as you know when you take the Porsche 919 and then take the rule book throw it out of the window and essentially make something like the 919 Evo that's this cuz this could be pretty much an ITC car but it took the rule books of the ITC car out the window and just became the craziest thing you could ever imagine and that's exactly how it is to drive the car is just so involving and it's something that you don't get from normal road cars at all now this suspension setup is not designed for the undulations and the question mark of roads that are there in bangalore but oh my god it is planted if you take a corner at high speeds it definitely just ticks and the best thing about this car is that it doesn't feel scary in fact pushing it once you get used to it <laughs> once you get used to it it is just intoxicating and i don't know i'm kind of dumbfounded for words now i just want to drive the car but yeah this experience is something unlike any other it is so rewarding since there are no there is no traction control there is no abs it's up to you and your cojones to push this car and stop the car Joel because this is the kind of car that I feel like if you are experienced enough you will not be intimidated by it at all it is a compliant car that gives great feedback and it is it makes you forget that you're at work it just puts a smile on your face in fact i would really really recommend this to anybody that would want something analog for a track day <laughs> but it's not all roses and uh, butterflies in paradise this is an expensive build this costs around 20 lakhs just in parts and building it's a intricate affair and the attention to detail definitely shows where the money has gone and the fact that i am actually driving it on a street definitely is proof that this thing is somewhat reliable for sure yeah tolerances have gone for a toss things will go wrong but what do you expect from a race bred car This had 100 bhp in stock form. It makes four and a half times more for Pete's sake. So I'm dumbfounded for words, and all I can say is, you need to drive it to believe it. Back to Bhavni in the studio that might have much better words for you. as he just stalls it as he just stalls it <laughs> this car is definitely a brains and balls resetter as it says on the sticker right there but at a whopping price of 20 lakhs for the cost of this build not including the car it is a massive commitment yes it is a supercar slayer by all means however it is a massive commitment to make and being an old car doing so many things 
many things can go wrong if the right hands are not behind it. So definitely, here you go. This is one of the wildest cars I've ever driven. But if you're in the market for something like this to your city type 2, make sure that you've got another car ready because this becomes a race car and it gives the same kind of behavior you would get from a race car. It's temperamental, it's difficult to drive, and it is a commitment on the streets. I wouldn't recommend anybody to drive a beast like this on the streets, but if you've got the appetite for it, the B15C2 can definitely reach this level. That's it from my end. Huge shout out to Mod BLR for letting us use this space to film. It's a beautiful place and they do a great job at detailing. Shout out to Joel from Race Concepts. He's done a mad job in this car. And shout out to Harsha for letting me drive his prized possession. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.